Things have not been going great on this back half of the class of 2023 for Penn State football, but that's not the only recruiting going on. Penn State is hard at work on the next class and the class after that. But what we're taking a look at today is the class of 2024. We've already previewed the offense. Now we're going to take a look at the defense with our recruiting insider, Ryan Snyder. These are the names to know for Penn State in the next cycle on the defensive side of football. So stay tuned here on the BWI Daily Edition. Welcome to the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Ryan Snyder with us here on a Friday, taking a look at the Penn State defense and the players that Penn State is targeting on that side of the football. The names that Penn State fans that are super into recruiting are going to be obsessing over for the next 14 to 18 months. Before we get to that, though, Ryan, there's already been some news on the offensive side of the ball. One of the players we highlighted as critical of the class, not with the Nittany Lions at this point. So fill us in on what happened. Nope. Yeah, Notre Dame plucks one out of Malvern. Uh, Peter Jones was always going to be probably a Penn State uh, Notre Dame battle, uh, but but really after he he went to Notre Dame. Oh shoot, when was it? I forget exactly when. I want I want to say this this spring. Um, I think it was April. I want to say and and right after that visit, it, it really started becoming clear that that Notre Dame probably is the favorite there. Uh, Harry Highstead, I believe, is their offensive line coach. I may have Heinstead, I believe it is. Uh, he, he has ties to Malvern, and I think that was a massive part in this. I, I, I'm not sure if he went to prep, but I know he's from the area. And and he really just connected with him right off the bat. And and I think the Irish just kind of got a foot in the door there. And 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 really, like I said, from that first visit, it, it felt like they were they were probably going to be the team to beat. He did come. He, so he did go to Notre Dame then. I think it was July 26, I want to say. Yep. And then did yep. come back to Penn State. July 30th, the lash bash. So he did give Penn State a look after yeah. that, after that Notre Dame visit. And, you know, when, when a player goes to one school, goes to another and then commits to the first school, yeah. he, it feels like their heart's definitely there. So yeah. I, I don't, I don't see Peter Jones as a guy who's going to be flip flopping and then coming up to Penn State and all that stuff, especially committed to a, a credible school like Notre Dame. So I, it, I would expect him to end up there. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, April 2nd, he went over there and then four days in between the 26th and the 30th so uh, of uh, of July at the end to make that decision. That is uh, a tough loss for Penn State. But if you want to check out the other names that are now even more important in the class of 2024, check out our other video. You can see a link in the description of this video and you can check out Blue White Illustrated on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to uh, get all that information and subscribe while you're at it so you never miss any of these. But let's get into the class of 2024 and the other names that are going to break Penn State fans' hearts because I'm just <laughs> I'm I'm dipping into the cynicism here a little bit for Penn State fans after losing TJ Parker earlier this week and all the stuff that's happened. But as a positive spin, there's some good early returns on some of these players, especially some of the guys on the defensive line. Is that a fair uh, assessment to say as you're looking at your scouting notebook of the names to mm -hmm. know at defense event? For sure. I mean, Dominic Nichols stands out right away. It's a guy that Penn State identified pretty early on, definitely earlier than most schools, uh, which they've always done a pretty good job with that. Um, and and then, like, now he's a, a top 150 player by our scouts at 1-3. I think the consensus is like number 270. But my point here is he's going to be a, a four-star player, you know, throughout pretty much. I don't see him, you know, dropping down to three-star range or anything like that. And, and he's yeah. a guy that I think Penn State absolutely should be considered the favorite with, uh, at least at this point. I mean, who knows? If maybe some other elite programs come calling. But uh, he took he's taken three visits to Penn State since January. Uh, that first one was in January. Uh, then did a, a trip in May and a trip in June. So uh, off to a great start there. And this is a player that I absolutely think should end up here. I believe his aunt uh, is a Penn State alum as well. So he has some family uh they're pushing, pushing the line. So that's, you know, a good start there. And, and he is a four-star player, like I said, that all signs are pointing to Penn State right now. But let's see, you know, what other schools come call, call in. There are some other quality ones. I know Michigan State, Virginia Tech are some schools he's, he's serious about. Uh, Brian Robinson, my God. Like, I, I don't know if I've ever been more impressed with a play. I say this all the time, right? Like, great player, you know, yeah. off the field. I, I bring this up all the time to those guys that really stand out to me. But holy cow, Brian Robinson is is like – like he could be like a dad now. He's that mature. Like I, I would trust him with my children. I would probably like look after them better than I do. Put it that way. So <laughs> incredible, just an incredible 
kid. I mean, I, 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 I can't remember an interview that really uh, – him and Jackson Smollick, honestly, are the two that come off to me this summer that – uh, that I did that just like absolutely wowed me. You know what also wows me about Brian Robinson is his visit list. Uh, he's been to I think two dozen schools already, which is crazy. Wow. Like, I mean, you're you're entering your junior year, uh, and you've already been to two dozen schools. I mean, and the list is so deep too. You got Michigan, you got Ohio State, you got Notre Dame, you got Texas A and M, you got Georgia, uh, Alabama's on that list. I mean, there, there's a ton of others too. Like I said, about two dozen or so. Uh, he has been to Penn State twice. He came uh, the day before the blue-white game, I believe, for kind of a personal day with the staff. And then he returned for camp uh, June 24th. And uh, yeah, while he was on campus, he, he got some, some some time to tour and look around a little bit too. But it was mainly that April visit where it really mm-hmm. kind of opened the door for Penn State. But he's going to be an, another incredibly important prospect, four-star player, uh, another top uh, 200 guy in, in, in both the on-three and on-three consensus rankings. And right. I think he'll be a player we're talking about a good bit. Uh, Ohio State has not offered him yet, which I was just about to I, ask about mind-blowing. that. He's from Austintown, Ohio. And mm-hmm. that's the first thing I, I'm wondering about. I know a lot of Penn State fans wonder that too. Okay, here's an Ohio kid. When's the rug going to get pulled out? Uh, but, you know, his list and his his list of schools is, is super impressive even without that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. So, I mean, obviously, if the Buckeyes come calling, you, you got to think that they're going to be <laughs> at minimum top two or, yeah. or something like that. But I, I do think Penn State will be top five here probably with him through – um, you know, through, through at least top 10, you know, probably be fringe top five at the worst. And they should be in the mix there. Let's see how, so how he how he continues visiting and stuff like that um, throughout the season. Uh, but just a couple other guys. Jalen Harvey has been on campus two or three times now. Another uh, his his own three ranking and his own three consensus are a little varied right now, which is it's still really early. Uh, but on three, you know, our scouts here have him as a top 140 prospect. The consensus has, has him as a two, number 230 overall. So uh, either way, another, another quality four-star player I think we'll be talking about a good bit. He's out of Quincy Orchard, Potomac, Maryland, uh, 6'2", 235. He did uh, attend a camp earlier this year, too, and had a pretty good workout. Uh, Ernest Miller, too, another player to keep an eye on out of St. Paul's School. I know some other programs have been trying to poach him away from there, so we'll see. I think IMG was one, maybe St. Francis, something like that. I mean, they're, so let's keep an eye. I mean, he, I think he's playing at St. Paul's this year, but mm-hmm. uh, he's a player that I know a lot of heavy hitters out there are, are trying to poach their team. Uh, my point with him, though, is he's another quality prospect. The all-three consensus has him uh, at number 81 nationally at the moment. And uh, he has visited Penn State, I believe, once, maybe twice. No, I think it's only just once. He, he attended a game last year. I think it was that Indiana game in early October. Uh, Dylan Stewart's going to be a, a, a you know, potential five. I mean, he is a five-star at the moment. Uh, number four for number four nationally, but uh, at a friendship collegiate academy. But I just I don't know. I, I don't really see it with Penn State. I I, I kind of yeah. get the, the vibe. He's he's going to end up elsewhere with A and M and Ohio State. Some other uh, intriguing offers. Uh, and then Jacob Smith, too, twin brother of Jared Smith, uh, out of Loomis Chafee, I believe it is Chaffee. I don't. I still can't figure out how to pronounce that school. But uh, two two more quality guys. They're both from Kentucky, but they they play at those New England schools. And, gotcha. uh, you know, I know Penn State's really high on both of those guys. But right now, I mean, Dominic Nichols is that one where it's like, OK, you got to land this kid. You, you yep. had him on campus a couple times now. You have a little bit of family ties. I mean, everything they've done right now uh, certainly points to Penn State. And, and if you could get uh, any of those other guys on that list, maybe one other one, uh, you'd have a pretty good uh, defensive end class in 2024. Uh, I know it's early and we still have some to, some stuff to learn about a lot of these guys, but it sounds like this is another deep uh, group of players like 2023 was in the region as well with some national players and then some high level mid players, you know, look, those high and mid four stars. Is that a fair assessment so far? And would yeah. you say the Penn State has another good chance in this cycle to land players uh, where maybe make up for some of the things that happened in 2023? Sure, but you know, let's <laughs> we keep right, coming back to NIL, and there's just so many other things. Like yeah. you know, if if Georgia's decide to throw 250 grand at you know Brian Robinson or something like that, like I, yeah, that, that that's that's going to be certainly intriguing. So um, yeah, there, there's 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 talent throughout the region, no doubt. Uh, and and like I said, they they have a real foot in the door. I think Nichols, Harvey are the two that really kind of. They've just, you know, visited multiple times and, and seem to have serious interest. Brian Robinson, too, but he's got interest from literally everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll see how things progress there. Er- er- I know Ernest Willer is, is another player they're incredibly high on. They'd like to get back on campus a little bit more. Ernest is just kind of, um, I don't want to say laying low. He just ha- and I don't believe he's taking too many visits and things like that. So 
uh, just just need to learn more on him. But those those three, those four kind of stand out. I, Dylan Stewart, we'll see. And then, you know, Jacob and Jared Smith, the, the, the brothers up in, uh, you know, originally from Kentucky, I, I kind of see them more going back down. Maybe not totally south, but, you know, ACC, SEC, right. something like that. Right. Let's move on then to defensive tackles and an area where I feel like this list, I, I've got a good idea coming in because, you know, I've talked about uh, these players a lot. Don't know that I know that about the defensive line. So educate me a little mm-hmm. bit here on the guys that we should know at defensive tackle. Well, th- this one's a hard one to read, really. I mean, a- gotcha. Emmett Law is the only one who's visited twice, and really, even his second visit was just like was just for team camp. You know, yeah, he was on campus, got to talk to the staff, maybe see a couple things, sit down with them briefly, but it wasn't like a personal day where you spend five six hours doing all things Penn State. I mean, most of his time uh, for for that June visit, uh, June twenty fourth, I believe it was, uh, was really just team camp. So Emmett, I mean, if you look at Emmett Laws, I mean. And it was there for the Auburn game and then team camp. Like even he has to, you know, come back for a personal day, kind of get those full tours and that, you know, sit down, watch film, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, you look through the rest of the list. I mean, Jordan, Jordan Thomas, D.D. Holmes, uh, Jared Smith, twin brother, Jacob, of course, and then Heaven Brown Schuler. They've all been on campus at least once. Um, so Brown Schuler was on campus. I believe it was June 21. He was just making some rounds with some schools up in the, up in the North. I mean, he's going to be a top prospect from down South. The consensus has him at number 35, uh, wow. overall in the nation, uh, on three has him a bit lower at number 127. But, uh, the point there is he's going to be a top prospect. I mean, George's offer, like all, all those top Southern schools are going to be after yeah. him. So do I see much coming for it? No, not really. Uh, DD Holmes, we got this to get a look at. He was, uh, up for one of the, uh, Seven on seven. So we got to see him as a Big Dan challenge. Uh, I think it was like June 10th. I think he was at the first one. He's got another another quality offer list, you know, with USC and Florida State, uh, Miami, Michigan, a couple others. Uh, but just again, like he hasn't really visited too many schools so far, or like any that, that I know of. Uh, Jordan Thomas is another guy who came up, visited for, I think, it, man, his was, I think, early April, I want to say. Uh, but he hasn't really done many visits either i think twice to or once to south carolina once to Rutgers, once to syracuse uh, so th- so we got a lot of guys here who just you know they've taken maybe a couple of visits here but you're not getting three four five visits at particular schools that, like, like you're seeing with some of these other 2024 guys and uh, it just looks like a board where I, I don't there's no real certainty there there's no dominic nichols there there's no anthony right. specka like at linebacker uh and, and it's a, and some other positions so your, your guess is as good as mine right now and who's really going to start emerging here. There's going to be players that aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of is for this one, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it'll, it'll, it'll take some time to sort this out. I think by the end of the season, you know, get a few more visits, see who comes for, for Ohio state, Minnesota, those big games, uh, you'll, you'll get a little bit of a better read on this. Yes. How does this work in the early season? We talked about the class of 2024 on the offensive side, but that's a great question is how do these, in these early months early in this seeing as they've been recruited for, you know, three, four months already, but now that they've headed into the season, how do you identify the players that are coming up just to watch a game or coming up and are seriously interested? Like how do you read these game visits during the season and some of this stuff that maybe crystallizes later? Yeah. I mean, those spring, those spring summer visits are always more intriguing to me because of the time you get with coaches. I mean, like you, you just get so much more out of those visits. I mean, the the game is just, you come up, you eat, you eat food in the recruiting lounge, and then you sit in traffic like everybody else after the game. I mean, that's, that's, you know, you watch the game, and that's great, and you got to get that experience, especially when Penn State offers one of the best ones in the country. But uh, I, I really look at those guys who try to get up here two or three times between March and the end of July uh, as the guys that's like, okay, you know, you you clearly have serious interest in Penn State. So um, you know, games games are important, but again, I mean. Yeah, we'll, we'll see who comes up for a couple of those. But with, with this defensive tackle board and, and so many guys who really just haven't done too many visits so far, that this is a situation where, yeah, we'll have a feel maybe for a couple of them at the end of the year. But next spring, summer, um, you know, when those guys return, maybe that's when we get a better read on some others. And there's going to be players, too, that, you know, just will pick up offers with time and, and so on and so forth. But the, the 2024 defensive tackle board is is pretty up in the air right now. I am looking forward so much now that I was thinking about it just now to watch to to looking at yours and Greg Pickles photos of players on field before Penn State football games. Do you know what to put uh, faces with all the names here for the defensive line and for all the other players? I'm so going to be sending a- you down to do that. No, I'm kidding. I'm just <laughs> you got to do that. You do the post game show. But uh, 
you you got the nice camera. Re- you've been doing a lot of our camera work recently, so that, that was yeah. an inside joke that nobody knows what we're talking about because you've been doing a lot of that <laughs> stuff behind the scenes. Anyway, let's go. To doing Wanda. my best. Yeah, let's let's You're go to good. a really interesting and as you mentioned, maybe a little more defined uh, list of names here. Anthony Specca is right at the top of the list here, obviously, but also right at the top of the list in a lot of different ways. Can you explain why? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I, what, well, first thing I'll say here is just that the linebacker board for the region is pretty deep. I mean, this was yeah. one where uh, they should be able to get at least two quality guys next year. And if they don't, it's it's they, they messed up. So, uh, of course, Manny Diaz, you know, is he going to be here forever? No, I don't think so. If he's here in three years, I'd be pretty surprised. But if he moves on right away, you know, I'd, just, I'd just be curious to see what happens with Manny after this year. And hopefully Penn State, for Penn State's sake, they have him for a year or two. At least yeah. two, because this is a good class, and they need him, who's building the relationships with these guys, to get them on board. Because you don't want more, more, more movement there. You've seen what's happened at offensive coordinator in the years. You don't want that happening now at D tackle or at uh, D coordinator. So, anyway, yeah. back to Specca though. Uh, top prospect from Pittsburgh. I have him and Aaron Childs as like one and one A on my board. Chris Jones is a guy I probably should kind of have in there a little bit too. Uh, Chris Jones is very uh, another highly rated guy. Uh, I believe he's, I think he's cousins with uh, Kenny Sanders, I believe. So there's some ties there. But when I, when I just speak with people, I, I just get the impression that, that Childs, uh, who's from Good Counsel, another uh, top 120-ish prospect, uh, depending on what ranking you use, but definitely a top player. And then Specka, who, so on three, has Specka as a three-star right now. This is like my biggest gripe in the world with Charles. I love Charles. Yeah. But uh, man, I mean, Penn State loves this kid. I, I, yeah. I need to get his seen- testing numbers or something. I've seen uh, maybe two minutes of his film, and I, I, I agree. He's a four-star player. He just moves like a four-star player. He's got great yeah. on-field athleticism and instincts for a linebacker. Yeah, I believe we're the only site that has. Well, I think no, twenty-four-seven has him as a three-star too, but they have him a little bit, a little bit higher than we do. But uh, I, I think, I think with time that that'll that'll change. But yeah. Um, so the thing with Specca, I mean, I, I'm expecting Specca to have a top eight here soon, and actually. Um, maybe out by the time you see this, I'm going to the beach side. Sorry if I ruined that for you. But uh, anyway, Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State, those feel like the three that uh, really kind of stand out the most to me. He, he's going to have a top eight with some other schools in the mix there. I think South Carolina, Tennessee, who he took visits to earlier this year, will be in the mix. But but uh, the fact that he went to Notre Dame, Michigan, Penn State at the end of July, is it, mm-hmm. that's – that's that tells me everything you need to know there. I mean, he those have been the three. I mean, he's been to Penn State, Notre Dame, I think five times now, Michigan four times, um, and then Pitt's three, but he hasn't been to Pitt State or Pitt since last October. So there, there's yeah. a big separation there if you look at those three and then the others in the mix um, as well who have all hosted him like once. So this is just my casual observation, but if there's one area Penn State seems to be still doing very well in, it is the Pittsburgh area. You know, Ronnie Gallagher aside, a lot of the players from the Western side of the state, they, they've been able to get over the years. Is that an advantage here where it's the, you know, not only is it he's interested in the school, but some of the other names he's from the Pittsburgh area. The ties seem to be deep there. Is that an advantage for the Nittany Lions? So, yeah. So Speck, I believe Speck actually grew up a Pitt fan. Um, oh, okay. Or at least his family did. Um, but I, I, I don't get the sense that Pitt's, I mean, Pitt's, Pitt's, Going to be in the mix, but I, I just again, this this looks like he's going to end up at either a Big Ten school or Notre Dame, who might as well be a Big Ten school. So yeah. we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, he didn't like grow up a Penn State fan or anything like that. So, uh, but but I will say, I mean, the, the thing that stood out to me with Pittsburgh, and at least this year and at least a couple couple recent years, is like they're missing some of those elite elite players that Ohio State always goes for. But they mm-hmm. have like those quality, you know top 250 kind of guys that Penn State really needs and, and Pitt sometimes struggles to get. So I think that's kind of why you're seeing success there. I want to also make sure that everybody knows that Terry Smith's like one of the best recruiters, uh, one of the most underrated recruiters, I think, uh, out there. I mean, certainly one of the best on Penn State staff and his ties to Pittsburgh. I think everybody knows that. So that's just kind of what stood out to me is, you know, you're not seeing those t- as many Terrell Priors, you know, in the right. Pittsburgh area that, that have right. everybody that, that we've seen at times in the past. But anyway, to get back to linebackers, uh, Cam Lindsay is another quality prospect out of Aliquippa, Western Pennsylvania. I think mm-hmm. he'll he'll certainly be a guy they push for. I've already mentioned Aaron Childs. I mean, he's kind of, um, like I said, he and he and Speck, I feel like one and one A to me. Um, but it's pretty similar to Tamir and, and Tony Robinson, if I'm being honest there. They, they're, Rojas. they're both going to be. 
Oh, yeah. Sorry. Tamir Robinson, Tony Rojas. Thank you. Thank you. Tony you. Robbins. I'll throw him in there, Tony, too. Tony, Tony <laughs> Robbins. I've been almost anyway. saying Tony Robbins this whole time, so I just had to say it once. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me, bud. But, uh, yeah, Chris Jones then, too. Um, you know, those guys kind of feel like the players – uh, that are that are probably most most realistic. Although Childs is going to be hard to get, let me clarify that because yeah. uh, Childs is going to be recruited by just about everybody. Chris Jones has been on campus quite a few times now. In more recent months, he's been going out to see other schools. I wouldn't I wouldn't overthink that too much. I mean, he's been to Penn State still. I think um, more than as much or more than any other school. I think Virginia Tech's the other one who's kind of caught up to them now. But Penn State should be top three, four with with Chris Jones when it's all said and done. Uh, Sam Piloff came to a camp in June, really had a strong workout there. The Wisconsin mm -hmm. uh, native uh, Wisconsin's offered a couple other quality schools, but uh, Penn State has good testing numbers on him. Got to see him move up close. And then Sam also came back uh, for, for the last bash in July. So he's another player I think will We'll be talking about a good bit. And, it's it's going to be tough. I, I'm fairly certain I saw he had a mullet, which I think automatically he did. Enrolled, he, that automatically <laughs> enrolls him at Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, that's going to be tough. Yeah. That's going to be tough to overcome. But yeah, uh, another, you're right. Another good player that we got to see in person that moved really well. So what I'm hearing is four linebackers, right? Penn State's going to adopt the 4-4. Four, four. They're going to play two defensive tackles that are over 330 pounds, and they're going to play four linebackers again. Right? Not when you need the, uh, what would you call it? The 11th defender? Is that, that the, the 11th position? defender? You know, yeah. The, the super safety. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think another, I mean, this is a deep board where, you know, if you were able to get a Specca and a Chris Jones, or we'll say a Specca and a Cam Lindsay, you know, maybe in the fall or something like that, or early in, in 2023, uh, I don't know how you can't then pursue an, an Aaron Childs or a Chris Jones or, yeah. you know, Gabriel Williams is another player too out of Pilates that, uh, I think has serious interest in Penn State. So we'll, we'll see how things progress there. Um, Darius Jones, too. I don't want to overlook at St. Francis and, and and William Love, too, from Camden. They've all been on campus at least once. But but really, when I look at this, it's Anthony Specka, Aaron Childs, uh, Chris Jones, Cam Lindsay, kind of that next tier. Along with Sam Piloff, I kind of put him in that tier, too. Um, and then, you know, Gabriel Williams, Darius Jones, and William Love, who are all, you know, good players. They're, they're high on the staff board, but – uh, when I look at these tiers of interest, that's kind of where I'm looking at there. Um, but but Child, Specca, they they are certainly two guys that Penn State's going to go all out for. And, and that would, I think, over the last couple of years, really put a run on linebackers if Penn State was able to get these players in this class uh, mm -hmm. and kind of strengthen and make Penn State fans feel a little bit better about the, the linebacker U moniker. Going to cornerbacks, an interesting group here. And I have a question once we get to the next group. But this is uh, our cornerback group. Can you explain what we have here from a uh, national perspective, regional perspective, and then the top targets? Mm -hmm. So uh, Kenny Woosley, Emilio Agard, uh, both out of Philadelphia. I think they're going to be pretty pretty, pretty high up on the staff's board. Uh, I know Pesce wants to watch Woosley a little bit more this season just because he missed time last year. But he, you know, he's performed well at all the seven-on-sevens. Great kid. Uh, I, think, I think from a size perspective, he's grown a little bit too, which is important. Uh, I believe we have him at 5'11", 165. So uh, Penn State would love to see him, you know, get another inch or a little, little thicker on him. But but Kenny Kenny would fit this program well. He's got a good relationship with Terry Smith. So uh, I think he he certainly makes sense there. Yeah, I've talked about Emilio a couple times. I mean, I think he's going to keep visiting Penn State. He's been he's been to Penn State three times so far. But just when I when I look at his top schools and, and the way he talks about some SEC schools and things like that, I just – I get the sense that he's seriously interested in going down south. So yeah. maybe that'll maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't. But uh, I definitely get that vibe from him. Ellis Robinson was originally from New York. I mean, he's from New York, but he's now playing at uh, IMG Academy. I mean, that's not a good sign. I mean, Ellis that's Robinson tough. is one of yeah. I mean, uh, Ellis Robinson is going to be a five star player. Uh, he's number six right now, or for on three, number seven in the consensus. I mean, he's he's an absolute stud. Uh, who has visited Penn State a few times. I believe he's been on campus twice. He came for a game last season, and then I believe it was – actually, both times were last season. He, he was at the last bash last year too. But, man, since moving to IMG, I mean, just look at his offer sheet. It's blown up. I just – it's it's not a good sign for Penn State, I think, with him. And same with Desmond Ricks too. I mean, it's, it's going to be he, – he visited last June and uh, – yeah, but I just haven't seen much interest from Rick since then. Jameer yeah. Benjamin is the player they did offer um, during a mini camp, uh, which was, I believe, June 24th. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, he, he's out of the Detroit area. Solid looking prospect. But when I look at this board, I, I, I think Kenny, Kenny Woosley makes the most sense, you know, out of the guys that have consistently been visiting. There's others who, you know, will visit down the road and, you know, will we'll certainly move up the board. 
but there there aren't too many guys here uh, like a Dominic Nichols, for example. Yeah. Who, yeah, I see as Penn State has to land, and and they're the fa- they're at the, the excuse me they're the true favorite with uh, at this stage. It feels a little bit just the way you describe it, kind of like uh, this again the current cycle of 2023 where you got a Lamont Payne who is a rock solid prospect in the class he committed early and I'm not saying Woosley is going to do that but a clear player in the region that you can target you can have a relationship with and maybe he commits early and then it's going to be what's the other player is it national Mm -hmm. is it somebody else that develops in the region but with a lot of the regional guys and I know you mentioned this previously when you get a good corner from the region and they go to IMG what are you supposed to do about that not much you can do. You I mean you repeat yeah. your ass off and keep trying, but you know, yeah. when when they go down there and every every SEC school gets their eyes on them, and uh, of course they're playing national schedules, so you know you're you're getting a uh, a ton of information. Uh, it's just there's just not a lot you can do. I mean, Penn State certainly had success at IMG, but when top guys in the area go yeah. to IMG, it's different. It's really funny if you look at their IMG success. It's been mainly. Southern guys who go to IMG yep. and then come north. It's when the northern players go to IMG, they usually end up playing down south. Maybe because they didn't like growing up in the northeast and they like it where it's sunny and warm. You, and, have that. It, you get that experience, right? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. kind of it's funny. I, I talked to I forget who it was. I talked to one of the one a player about that like two or three years ago, and they're like, dude, I moved to Florida. I was never coming home. Like it was, <laughs> it was a funny chat we had one day. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that's certainly part of it. I, I would well I would have never gone to IMG because I just hate the heat I I prefer <laughs> yeah, where same. you have seasons so we wouldn't we uh, that's the only reason that Ryan and I wouldn't have been recruited by IMG truthfully that's oh, yeah, the I only mean, reason they knew five eight little stumpy but you know other than that yeah I could have done it anyway yeah Max <laughs> uh, so the safety group uh, this is a this is a big list compared to the quarterback uh, it is group so is this again the product of regional interest. How much of that is Manny Diaz and his, you know, kind of the interest in bringing more safeties into the program? How many of these guys are true safeties? There's so many ways I want to know about this group. Are some of these guys corners that are just playing safety? Break this group down for us, please, because there's a lot of names here. Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing I would say is that Penn State's handed out a lot of offers for 2024 safety. Uh, and the, the the encouraging sign is that I think they've handed around 27, 28, I think it's just under 30 and like almost half of them have visited already. I think that list yeah. is 13 safeties who have visited already. So uh, that, that's a that's a good positive sign. There aren't too many guys. I mean, there are a handful of guys who have visited twice. There's not too. There's no one that's been here three, four, five times already. Um, when I when I look at the guys who have been here a couple of times, a couple a couple stand out to me. Noah Jenkins was just here for the for the lash bash. Certainly had good things to say. Uh, we'll we'll see how that progresses. He's from Highland Springs, uh, a good player, uh, but not. I wouldn't say like an elite. Um, you know, top top 100 kind of player. Uh, Shamir Fredericks is a player who really stood out to me at Penn State 7-on-7 seven seven earlier this year. Awesome size on Shamir. 6'4", uh, uh, what's his weight? Around like 170. Little, I, think, I think he's a little bit above that now, maybe closer to 180. But like his length and the way he moves makes him a very intriguing player. I think Shamir yeah. Fredericks is someone we're going to be talking about a good bit uh, out of Canarsie. Uh, so, so here, Rayner as well. Uh, he's been here twice. Uh, Edris Farouk has been here twice. Uh, and Jaden Spearman's been here twice. None of those guys are like what I would consider, you know, elite top tier guys. They just have uh, visited consistently. So, you know, we'll, we'll see if anybody really emerges there. I think Kaj Sanders is somebody that Penn State should should uh, and, and will seriously pursue. You know, he's a he's a top. He's in the on three hundred. I think the on three has him at number like number two hundred or so. Uh, he's out of Bergen Catholic, which you know they've had up and down success with over the years, but, but Kaj does just from my limited talks with Kaj, I mean, he does seem to have real serious interest in Penn state. So we'll, we'll see how that progresses, but Samaj Jackson, you know, out of St. Thomas Aquinas, I think he was up for uh, the blue white game. We'll, we'll see if uh, they can keep that St. Thomas Aquinas train rolling. Of course, they're in good shape with Jordan Lyle, who we talked about in that last podcast uh, running back prospect, but there's just a lot of guys who have visited um, and, you know, have, have been up here and are, are clearly interested in Penn state, but not too many guys that I think like, okay, uh, Penn state, you know, is a favorite with or anything like that. Right. Uh, but what well, actually there's, there's one guy I got to mention Jalen McLean too, at a Seton hall prep in New Jersey. I do think he's going to be another one who's pretty high on that board. Uh, him and Kosh Sanders kind of, they, they grabbed my attention at this early stage. Cam Richardson too. Uh, they were trying to get Cam Richardson out for the uh, for the last bash, and he wasn't able to make it. But um, Kaj, Jalen McLean, they both have pretty high rankings. I think Penn State um, 
has serious interest in. So that's a, a good group, and you're already wetting my appetite to look at Shamir Fredericks as a uh, as a linebacker. He's good. Six four, six, four he's, baby. Yeah, I love. I mean, he's a, he's a true six four too. That's all legit. So I, I just I love move. athletes that have unique dimensions, and that sounds that sounds like one of those guys. Um, so mm-hmm. the the last group that we don't have uh you know a list for, but I do want to ask you about: Are there any players that don't have a designation for a? position you know the athletes out there are there any players that you want to highlight here after we get through the safeties and all that stuff that people should keep an eye out on but maybe we don't really know exactly where they're being recruited just yet yeah so i'm pulling up my list now you you surprised me with this one i mean of course we talked about quentin martin last week he's listed as an athlete with on three uh but he'll he'll be a running back um i mean i i think i mean he's talking about uh playing cornerback this year and the guy can run no doubt about yeah. that but uh if he were my kid be... he's playing corner like i'm sorry i don't want you playing running well, back you're gonna play corner. Well, that's why he's kind of brought it up like his size and he can run um you know i think like some people have just been in his ear that like hey man like your long term future if you could if you could learn how to be a cornerback you can make some yeah. serious money but yeah um i just think this i don't know i think he feels most comfortable with running back right now but we'll see yeah. i mean quentin martin can play five positions it doesn't matter like just get him in your program and, you know, he's not Micah Parsons from like a he's, – he's a frequent athlete, but like, you know, punt returning and things like that that we always joke around about. I don't know about all that with him, but yeah, uh, he, he's just a dynamic player you got to have. Um, Emmanuel Ross is going to be a wide receiver. He's listed as an athlete right now. Uh, Kenny Everett's a, a, an athlete that I need to get a better feel for him out of Winslow Township. I, I think he's more of a defensive back, but uh, just still trying to get a feel for him. But there's, there's not too many um, – you know, Jeray Hawkins came up. He's going to be a wide receiver. He's listed as an athlete. He's out of uh, Wheeling Park, West Virginia. Josiah Brown, I've talked about a few times out of out of New York. I think he's going to be more of an offensive player, probably a wide receiver. But uh, no, no, it's not too many guys here that like you know stand out as uh, as players we need to be like talking about a lot. Aside, of course, from Quentin Martin. So we've covered all the positions: offense, defense, even a little bit of the wild cards. Is there anything that stands out to you about this group in 2024 that maybe is unique to previous years, or is something you're thinking about when you're looking at this particular class? Uh, I, I'm thinking about how NIL is going to impact this class, uh, yeah. and I know that that's something we're talking about a lot with 2023. But just you know, with 2023, it's it's full go now, right? I mean, like yeah. we're we're and we're 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 seeing. In, in the summer months, how, how much attention this has gotten. And yeah, it was still getting attention earlier in the class, but for this 2024 class, like from the very beginning of their recruitment to the very end, like NIL will have an impact the whole way. Uh, and mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of how I'm looking at it. So uh, just, just kind of, do we get any kind of new rules or legislation that impact this a little bit? Does it say the wild, wild West for some degrees? I mean, there's, I just, I just think that 2024, could also potentially be the last class where we don't get any rulings, right? Because I would hope that by 2025, 2026, we just get some kind of, yeah. some, I don't know whether it's Congress or whatever it's got to be. Uh, but this 2023 and 2024 class are going to be the ones that just, it's going to be incredibly hard to read, man, because you're going to have yeah. a lot of guys who are coming here visiting. You see all the right things from the outside looking in. What you don't see is school X offering this and school school Y offering this and yeah, and just those little things that uh, will have a big impact. So this is kind of my thought from that is it, it, let's say that what you would your hope, what you hope comes true that in 2025 for that class, there are rules, there are clear defined boundaries, right? There's still two years of this particular system and right. the the schools that already have an advantage that are taking advantage of this get more of an advantage, which turns into more college football playoff appearances, turns into more interest, turns into that snowball effect that just makes you a runaway favorite to never not win. So mm-hmm. for Penn State, how critical are these two years to even if you're not doing maybe the underhanded salacious thing, you're still winning enough to keep yourself in contention. Do you think Penn State can get to that point of, you know, fighting back a little bit after some of the erosion at 23 and make sure that they get a Quentin Martin, they get some of these guys in 24 and they don't just, you know, bleed talent to the South. Get, you got to win on the field. I mean, you got to get back to consistent nine, 10 win seasons. I and mean, that's, that's, you know, having that stability uh, doesn't allow schools down south to 
to to use that and NIL against you, right? Right. To use you know coaching changes and all these other kind of things that we've seen over the last couple of years. So I, I just I just think winning is incredibly important. I think I think you know again I'm going to go back to the NIL here, but getting your own players and the publicity that the current roster, like like getting Sean Clifford out there that he's earned a hundred thousand dollars last year, like that's good. And I know it's yeah. not what. Uh, some others have earned, but like, like we didn't even know that until I don't know a month or two ago. Like, I feel like that kind of stuff needs to be promoted more. Uh, yeah. And maybe I guess it's not on those coaching staff to promote it because I don't know if they can really are supposed to be talking about that stuff. But just just getting more information out there on the success that some of the players are having, I think that'll that'll help as well. But uh, I mean, Penn State's always recruited well. Like they they yep. they put in the time, they scout well, they do all those other little things. But we're just now in a stage where I'll say it. That shit don't matter. You know, yeah. like it doesn't. It doesn't. And yep. and it, I mean, it does, but it, it maybe not at the very end when you know school X can just can just do whatever they want because if they they can offer some some money that school Y isn't offering. So it's 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 the wild wild west for a reason right now, guys. And then just yeah. until it gets changed, it's it's just hard for me to to point at guys and say, yeah, they should absolutely land here because we've as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, man, just things can flip real quick. Keep your antenna up and subscribe if you haven't already to bluewhiteillustrated.com, Blue White Illustrated on YouTube, which you can search Penn State Football will come up. And of course, on uh, wherever you get your podcasts, social media, everywhere. You need to know this information when it comes out. Ryan is on the cutting edge of all of these things to give you that information. So we'll have him here on the YouTube channel, on our podcast, over at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Get inundated with the information from us ryan thank you so much for coming on today and giving us the overview of the defensive class yep i'll see you guys in a week i'm off to the beach have fun at the beach we will uh, be back on monday and we'll have more information from penn state football training camp all things penn state here on the bwi daily edition i'm thomas frank carr